All right, good evening, everyone, and welcome to season two, episode one of Get the Skinny on Beach Body Coaching. Tonight, Shelly Craft, Tom Berkemeyer, and special guest Hannah Lyons are going to be talking about so you want to change the world through uh, health coaching, through helping people live healthy and fit lifestyles. Where the heck do you get started? How do you get started? Um, so we're just going to jump right into it. And uh, who wants to take it away? If nobody else does, I can. Uh, <laughs> yes, absolutely, you can. <laughs> okay, so right off the bat. Best place to get started is to enroll with a coach. So then you've enrolled with um, some product because you're going to want to use the product so that you can get a result with it, be some kind of a proof that it works. So you've got your own story to share with people as it unfolds. You can share bits and pieces. You can sprinkle your story. I've heard people say the word sprinkle. You can sprinkle your story as it happens with people on your social media and wherever else. Um, so once you're enrolled and you're using the product, you just uh, invite people and you get in touch with your coach, obviously, about crafting an invitation that makes sense for you that you want to send out and then that reflects your truth and start inviting people. So, so based on what you're saying, a coach needs a coach, but how does, how does someone who's aspiring to be um, a health and fitness coach, you know, uh, through Beachbody, for example, I mean, how do they find the right coach to coach them in, in the business. I mean, that would seem to me to be a you know, kind of an important place to start. Be a very curious person and ask people some questions. And the one that you vibe with, you know, the one's like, yeah, that's the one. Okay, so it's, a, it's kind of a personal decision. Yeah, I think so. Okay. How do you think most people um, today, Tom, Tom or Shelly, um, kind of encounter, um, you know, encounter, uh, you know, coaches in the Beachbody business um, in the first place. I mean, I, 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 let me just put it this way. I meet a lot of people. I mean, I was, Tom, I was lucky that you reached out to me and you spent the time getting to know me over a period of years. But, you know, I had no clue what Beachbody was before I got started, um, mm -hmm. you know, and, and developed my own personal coaching business, you know, um, you know, how, I don't know, it, it's, how, how do those, how do you, what is the best way to make those connections or to find, you know, find that connection? I mean, how do people even sort of get the inkling that this is something they might, they might even want to do? Well, I like asking people, are you interested in health and fitness? Do you like health and fitness like I do? Um, mm -hmm. I, I also ask people, are you interested in making some passive and residual money so maybe you won't have to work the rest of your life and you can just walk away from working or take a break and still have money come in anyway? Or, and do, you like tying, do you like tying the two together? Do you like health and wellness and, and making a residual income tying the two together? And so most people I say that to, if I frame it in that way, then they're at least curious to look at it. And then mm -hmm. I, would you be at all interested in looking at something with more information, probably a video? And if it looks like a good fit to you after you see it, if something resonates with you, would you like would you like to look at it to see if you'd like to do it? That's something like that. And most mm -hmm. people will say, sure, I can at least take a look at it, see if it's something I'd like to do. Um, so that's how I share this with most people. And from there, they're going to have questions or they're just going to not be interested in it, which is fine. And some people will enroll. Some people will do it now. Some people will do it next week or next year. It's just everyone's different. But that's my basic general process is I'll just ask, I'll ask people if they'd be at all interested in looking at what I'm doing with health and fitness to make money to see if it would be a good fit for them too. So, so, so ultimately, ultimately at the end of the day, it is about, it is about, you know, uh, if this is something that you want to do as a, as a career, as a, um, as a way of, I mean, a lot of people get into beach body coaching because they, they, they want, they have a passion for helping people through health and fitness. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the products work, the, their, their products of the product themselves, like all of us are. Um, and, <clears throat> um, but for, you know, 
you know, the reality is, is that if you truly want to help people and you want to, you want to do this full time, there is an economic side to it. You have to, you have to make money. Otherwise it's just a hobby. Um, and you truly can't help people. I mean, like Tom, you, you've been doing this for what, for 10 years, right? Yeah. Over 10 years now. Right. And, and what have you been able to do with, with the, you know, you just don't, make all this money and hoard it. I mean, what have you been able to, what good have you been able to do with the money that you've made as a health coach? Well, let me get started with that answer. <laughs> so one, I was able to eat because for a while it was looking like <laughs> I could possibly be, no, really, when I first started, it was looking, yeah. like, it was looking like I could possibly end up homeless because I didn't have a job. I had no income. Unemployment had run out, so nothing was coming in. And then right. I put $200 on a credit card um, of money that I didn't have and had no means of paying off. So that was my starting point. But I don't know, something told me to do it and I did it. So I'm glad I listened to that voice. But anyway, um, so the first thing was survival. Okay, yay, I can eat now. <laughs> and uh, I can start to afford the cost of living. And then after that, um, sometime after that, I was like, yay, I don't need a job anymore. So I called off the job search because I never did find work again. I, that never happened. So then I was like, yeah, I don't need a job anymore. And that was probably the biggest celebrate, celebration I had was like, wow, I don't need a job anymore. I mean, that's like, what a weight lifted off your shoulders, man. Holy cow. And then sometime after that, I was like, yeah, I can buy my house. And then sometime after that, I was like, I don't need a mortgage. I'll just pay for it in cash. So then I bought my house in cash so I didn't have a mortgage or rent. Then um, so things kept going up for a while from there. And then sometime after that, it's like, oh boy, I can put all this money now into rental properties. So then I started buying all these rental properties and, uh, and I don't need to take out any distributions from the income that they generate. I can roll it right back into itself because of my beach body income. Um, and, so, and also I can donate a little bit now. I like to donate to Gerson. They heal people from cancer using nature, not medicine. I love Gerson.com, G-E-R-S-O-N.com. <laughs> and uh, um, King's Ransom Foundation, uh, they're the other... Place. So really two places I donate money to, Gerson and King's Johnson Foundation. They put all the money to work. Uh, there's no overhead. They get their overhead taken care of by other means. So the donation money goes towards the cause. Um, so I guess those, oh, and also perhaps the most important for me, and it's a little bit selfish. I get to spend more time with my family, my parents. Um, most of you know, my dad passed on a couple months ago or almost three months ago. And being able to be there with my dad was the most important thing in the world. And I didn't have to check in with a gatekeeper at some job that could say yes or no. So those are, those are the biggest reasons right there, man, because we're all going to have that. And most people have to be like, oh, I got to go make money because I, I don't want to, you know, I want to eat and be able to pay my bills and stuff. But, oh, I want to be with this, you know, whoever, for whatever reason. Right. And most people are faced with very tough scenarios like that because they never did anything to produce any passive and residual money. So it means the world. Right. And the one thing you left out is that, 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 that the rental properties that you, that you have, mm -hmm. um, you, you, I mean, they're, you, you, you have rental pro I, I mean, maybe not exclusively now, but, but in the beginning, at least I understand, my understanding was, is that the rental properties that you have were for low, low income housing, affordable. Still are lower to mid income. Right. So. Yep, still exclusively doing that. Yep, awesome. And okay. my goal is to get another one or two this year, maybe. Mm -hmm. so maybe three, who knows? All nice. right, excellent. Mm -hmm. So, Shell, what do you got to say about all this stuff? <laughs> I'm thinking about the difference between Tom and I and how we got into coaching. Mm -hmm. Because when I look for people to join my team, for me, most people approach me because I share every day, like I work out six times a week now, <laughs> you know, at least. And in the beginning, when I first started the beach body thing, if someone said, are you into health and fitness? I would have been like, no, not at all. I'm doing it because I have to, you know, and then over time using the programs I've gotten into it and I really enjoy it. So for me, it's finding someone who's seen me, every day showing up being accountable using the products and saying look what this is doing it works it's awesome they want to know more then introducing them to a program and the shakeology and everything having them see what it does and then saying look you're sharing it 
why not make some money doing that too? You could possibly make it a career. And then they have an interest in it already. Mm -hmm. You know, that's how I got into it because my whole coaching started this way. You know, I was doing it. I wanted to quit smoking, but I didn't want to get fat. So I started working out <laughs> in order to do that. Mm -hmm. Hey, you would be a great coach. No. Did you ever think about coaching? No. Like this was the conversation in the beginning, you know, and I'm just like, no. And then finally it was, well, you realize what you're doing already is coaching. You're just not getting paid for it. Oh, oh tell me more. You know, it was kind of like. Well, that's mm -hmm. what got you. Yeah, because I was already basically coaching. I just wasn't a coach in, right. you know, in the, the actual sense. I was already doing pretty much the vitals. <laughs> I mm -hmm. just wasn't, you know being an actual coach. So it depends on the person. That's why it's so important that we get to know people before we, you know, during the invitation process. So it's not an icky sales thing. You need to realize who would be, and like Tom said, if you're not into it, that's fine too. But you don't know until you get to know people and know mm -hmm. their motivation. Right. And the thing I, is, is, the thing is, is that, oh, I'm sorry, Tom. But, you know, the thing is, is that the world really needs health coaches right now. You know, Absolutely. I mean, the, the state of the medical industry right now is just, it's just abysmal. And if anybody can attest to this, it's Hannah. <laughs> my, sweet, my sweet friend, Hannah, maybe you can say a few words about what you've been through, but, but how many surgeries have you had? Thirteen. Thirteen. Oh yeah. Wow. Um, th th this, this sweet beautiful soul <laughs> who I was privileged to meet how many years ago now has it been five years ago for yeah five years ago um, she's she has been through the, the, the medical mill and um, and it's been quite a journey you want to say a few words about that Hannah sure um, over the past four and a half years uh, 13 major surgeries that have left me with 30% of my stomach left. Oh my gosh. Um, yeah, it has been an ordeal and then some. The medical industry, I have hardly any faith left in, to say the least. Um, at times, they would make me feel like I was crazy. I would go to the best of the best of hospitals, and... Oftentimes, I was told, oh, you just need, well, we can offer you plastic surgery when they would not address some serious issues. And I was just absolutely heartbroken. And I finally had the realization, you know what? I've had enough. Yeah. And there was always this inner voice inside of me just compelling me and pushing me forward. And, you know, I was in a coma for 10 days and coming out of all of this stuff, I was just like, you know what? I have a story that needs to be told. And all this has just kind of led me to the point where I'm at today. Mm -hmm. And just being able to walk and the gratitude I have in my heart for everyone who has been by my side, like, it, I do not let my feet hit the ground every morning I wake up. Like, I am just grateful. <laughs> so that's where I'm at right now. Yeah. And you're doing okay now? Um, well, I still have, right now, I'm dealing with lupus and a few other things. But, you know, I take each day as it comes. So. Mm-hmm. So you're making right. progress, you're doing better? I'm giving it all I have and then some. I'm a mm -hmm. fighter. Yes, she is. And she's and she's embracing um, you know, she well, a while back she embraced healthy eating and 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 more uh, <clears throat> what's the word I'm looking for? Holistic approaches to oh, some yeah. of her health issues. And um and it's really helped, hasn't it? I mean you yeah. still have your challenges, but oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. But you're moving in the right direction. You feel pretty good now. Yeah. I mean, I, I was I was over at Hannah's before Christmas, 
and is, I don't know if it's okay for me to, to tell oh, the yeah. story, but she brought, she brought out, she wanted to show me something. She brought out a bag. And this is in a small bag. This is one of these like mega shopping bags full of empty pill vials of all of the medications that, that she has been given over the, over, over the course of the last year, right? Mm -hmm. It really, I mean, it, I just, you know, I was shocked. I mean, it was just, just really put into perspective how everything that she's going through, the, the answers are, you know, surgery, shoving pills down her throat, you know, it just, but, but no other alternatives or offerings or any other kind of um, care. And it just, just goes to underscore how badly we're needed. <laughs> Exactly. you know, in the world today. Exactly. So, and how, what a, what a, what a, what an amazing gift coach, coaching really is in so many ways. We That's literally true. save lives. That's true. Yep. It is true. I absolutely love when one of my people, I don't want to say my challenger. Yeah, they're, they're my people. They're my people. <laughs> So like today, one of them, you know, she's a, she's a friend now. We were talking and she, for the first time in years, is now her weight starts with a one. And like that just meant so much to her just to be able to be like, I was literally doing a happy dance. Like I <laughs> stood up on my desk. I'm like, I am so happy dancing for you right now because, Aww. you know, it was just so awesome to be able to share that milestone with her and to celebrate with her. and that's what I love you know like and you know me I'm I'm all about scales or for fish and whatnot but you know there are definitely benchmarks that that need to be celebrated and because it's that much closer to being the healthiest you can be which is what it's really about you know so I'm like so psyched for her <laughs> that's awesome Shell that's awesome yeah she's good people yeah Right, right now, just a just a little tidbit. Right now, Hannah and I are are doing a free group in my um, I Believe in Me 365 Challengers group, and it's a 21 day oxygen mask challenge. I saw that, but I didn't know uh, what it was about. Yeah, what are, what's it, what is it about, Hannah? Oh, it's taking care of yourself for 21 days because oh my goodness, I can totally attest to this for the past. Oh, gosh, for a long time, I've just putting myself last and putting everyone else's needs above my own and just running out empty. So this challenge is about learning to put time aside and loving yourself to take care of other people. Yep. Well, it, yeah, it's about doing one small act of kindness for yourself each and every day to develop a habit of putting yourself first. Um, ah, Ruby's here. Hi. Hey, Ruby. <laughs> Hi, Ruby. She's frozen. Oh, there she is. There she is. Well, I love the concept of your group. Yeah, and it's, it, I tell you, it's wonderful having Hannah doing it with me. It's, uh, it's, it's really turning into a beautiful thing. Oh, thank I think you. I yeah, think coaches awesome. uh, should team up with each other and collaborate and do group efforts like that. I think mm -hmm. it's, it's all around better for everybody. Yeah, absolutely. I don't know if it just happens to be because it's the beginning of the year, but on my like page, for lack of a better way to refer to it, I'm doing it every day, like 25 days of gratitude. And it mm. asks you a question about something in your day that you can be positive about like for the same thing because it's so easy to concentrate on everything that's falling around you instead of hey well that was kind of cool you know like I'm really grateful that that happens you know yeah totally yeah. totally so Ruby can you hear us Ruby Ruby can you hear me <laughs> I was turning to like Yentl all the time here <laughs> Uh, yeah, I think she had the same problem last oh, time. I um I posted something on my timeline the other day that reminded me of what you three had said earlier. Um, what was it? Something along the lines of, "Would you do it if you could get paid money to share your story as it unfolds?" 
Yeah. I'm oh, really yeah. Oh. And a bunch of people responded and said, hell yeah. Yeah, I would. <laughs> a, couple, a couple of people said, no, it's too embarrassing. Um, but most people were like, heck yeah, I would. It was like a no-brainer for them. Yeah. So when I, and I followed up with each and every one of them on a private message. And I just asked them, hey, I saw you responded to the thread about getting paid to share your story. Mm -hmm. Well, that's what I've been doing for over 10 years. Would you like to see what I'm doing to see if you'd like to do it with me too? That was pretty much how I private messaged all of them. And they all said, okay, I'll take a look. <laughs> no, that's, that's great. And you know, the ones who say it's too embarrassing, right before we started this, I, I rewatched Renee Brown's TED Talk on the power of vulnerability. Oh, that's you know, a good one. I saw those that. people need to watch the power of vulnerability. That is a, no, that is classic. You know I, I need to write it down, make the note to go back to those people and say, hey, you mind if I shared something with you about the power of vulnerability? Because I just yeah. noticed. And who yeah. knows, maybe it'll turn yeah. something on for you if you have yep. to watch it. Yeah, we're gonna. Oh, sorry, well, no. hey, Hannah doesn't know this yet, but uh, tomorrow we're, our post is going to be on. Um, she crafted a beautiful post today about positive affirmations, and mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> tomorrow we're going to have um, a post about um, you know doing a kindness for yourself by watching an inspirational TED talk. And the one tomorrow is about um, about mental. Uh, this 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 Swedish the psychologist. Um, and his his theory that people should practice um, mental hygiene or, or you know uh, psychological hygiene with the same diligence that they that they practice physical hygiene and you know mm, and a it's it's, a, it's really fascinating but I think we should also we should probably do a second one and and uh, share the Brene Brown power of vulnerability maybe later in the challenge yeah um, so anyway. Hygiene. So there could be a financial hygiene one too. There could be. Yeah, there could be. So every day, every Does day. The perfect, wow, check this out. Every day, the perfect trilogy. Um, you're going to practice some good physical hygiene, some psychological hygiene, and some financial hygiene. And we're going to do that every day. Oh, that's mm -hmm. awesome. <laughs> That is mm. awesome. Hey, does that have anything to do with the two-minute potty, uh, what is it called? The five-minute no. potty training? The five-minute five potty, potty training. <laughs> no, but I guess it could, though. You could apply it to that. You know, five minutes out of, you know what, 15 minutes a day. Hey, that, that training, that training is really kind of, you know, would be essential to getting started as a health coach, would it not? Yeah, if you've only got five minutes a day. If you've only got five minutes a day. That so just depends floss on your, your brain person. and floss your finances. <laughs> I, I'd prefer yeah. somebody had an hour a day, to be honest with you, but if, if five minutes right. is all someone has, and that's basically what I made that for. Yeah. Well, uh, it's, my, it's my sincere belief, and this is something I try to get pe challengers to do at the beginning of the, um, beginning of the, uh, uh, the, the oxygen mass challenge, which is, you know, people say they don't have, have time and what is that like that's that's the, that's the adult version of the dog ate my homework right mm -hmm. and uh and you know if they would just do my simple um time blocking exercise before the start of every week they would have the realization the epiphany that that i had when i thought that i had absolutely no time that they mm -hmm. actually do have time Mm -hmm. You know, but you have to, you have to physically lay it out. It takes five, 10 minutes where you lay everything out, your meal times, your grocery shopping, your appointments with the kids, you know, the kids activities, your, your work schedule, everything. And you, you discover that you, you have anywhere between 15, 20, sometimes I, sometimes I have 40 hours of free time that I didn't even realize I had because I just go through that simple exercise. So a lot of people, most people, most people who say they don't have the time, they actually do. And Autumn said when she's the trainer that created 21 Day Fix and 80 Day Obsession for people who don't know who I'm talking about, she said there was a lot of people when they found out the 80 Day Obsession workouts are an hour and they said, I don't have an hour. And she said, then your life is out of balance and you need to do this for yourself, you know, yeah. and it was kind of like, yeah, you know. So you make the time when things are important. Right. Yeah. You, you know, like how yours works that you can actually find the time <laughs> when you block it out, you know. Yeah. But, but just, 
that people can do, and I've been using this for years. I'll have somebody, I think I've shared this with you guys before, I'm sure I have, I'll make uh, two columns on a piece of paper and they'll write down their, col their priorities in the left column. And it might be three or four things of priorities. And then on the right column, I have them write down everything they actually do. So like audit their day, write down every little thing. And that column is usually huge. And then I say, okay, draw a line from every item you got in your long list of right column stuff to what it lines up to with your priority on the shorter list. And usually it's like, you know, half the list doesn't line up with any of those priorities. And it's like, okay, so some of these, these things might be great things, but you're saying you don't have any time. So all this other stuff that doesn't line up with your priorities, it's got to go at least temporarily. Yep. Right. And that always 100% of the time opens up time that they didn't know they had. Yeah. Yeah, totally. That's a, that's another great way to do it. And um, yeah, now that you mentioned, I remember, remember you talking about that another time. That's an excellent exercise as well. So, so Ruby, can you hear us now? Yeah. Uh, I don't, oh, good. Okay. Yay! Yay she's alive. Right. <laughs> yeah, live and kicking. <laughs> well, it's good to see you. Now, if we only had amethyst, we'd have a couple of gems in the house. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I'm a gem. Well, that's true. That's true. Well, of course. <laughs> you're a gem. You're we a gem. all are. We all are. And, yes. and you're a gem too. Yep. <laughs> all right. Anybody else have any? Oh, any have any uh, thoughts about um, changing the world, making it a happier place, getting people started in coaching? Oh, I have a big one. Oh, good. Mm -hmm. You know how there is a, a negative connotation associated with MLM, multi-level marketing? Mm -hmm. Well, if I think about it logically, I know that um, multi-level marketing is you talk to somebody who talks to somebody who talks to somebody who talks to somebody. So that's leverage. That has the propensity to change the world. So one person could talk to, say, 100 people, 10 people, whatever, and they talk to a certain number of people, and they talk. So it just it spreads like wildfire. If it's a great idea and resonates, it could go viral, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Versus if you don't have that kind of leverage, you're just one person and you have to do 100% of the work. Well, now it's in the beginning, you're doing 100% of the work until it catches fire in somebody else. And then now maybe you're doing 50% of the work until it catches fire in somebody else. And now maybe you're doing, I don't know, 10% of the work until it catches fire in somebody else. But you're still putting out the same amount of effort and time and energy Mm -hmm. And now you're doing 1% and then maybe 0.1% eventually. And it's spread to thousands of people, eventually millions of people. So that's how you change the world. It's MLM. You know who the first great MLMer was? Any I guesses? don't know. I don't know, Tom. Who was it? Mary Kay. It was, it was Jesus Christ. He told 12 oh, okay. people. <laughs> 12 people who went out the world. I didn't go back far enough. <laughs> Yeah, you, no, you did not. Not no. by a long yeah, shot. <laughs> can you imagine? Can you imagine if Jesus had to go out and individually, you know, talk to everybody individually? There's, I know he was Jesus and perfect and everything, but he told twelve people who went out and told a bunch of people who went out and told a bunch of people. Multi-level marketing. Right. Yeah. Or network marketing. Marketing. Yeah. Um, yeah, and it's very true. I mean, you cannot. You cannot start a movement. I mean, we all we all leverage Beachbody products in our in our coaching businesses because they work. <laughs> you know, they work. They transformed my health. They helped me lose weight. Um, you know, and you know, we all have similar stories. Um, <clears throat> but you can't. You know, but but our each of us have a coaching business that has a has a you know a, a individualized or personal mission, um, and you can't you can't um, you can't spread the word as Tom says you can't um, you can't create a movement you can't change the world unless you know like Carl Dykler says that you have a team and there's a power in teams, and that's why it's so important you know, to, to get the word out, to network, to multi-level market, whatever you want to call it. Um, 
so that so that we can change the world and we can help people leave, live happier, healthier, more productive lives. Um, the world will be a better place, no doubt about it, um, if we if we do this um, and we do it the right way. Um, and the world needs us. It it it, it desperately needs us. Um, if nothing else, to, to to you know to let to let let them know that there there is an answer. Um, you know their pain points can be addressed. There is hope. Um, and there is a better way than relying solely 100% on the, on the far, uh, pharmaceutical stranglehold on the medical industry, Amen. So, which is no longer about people. It's just about profit yeah. and keeping people sick yeah. so, so that this endless, you know, this endless cycle can go on. So. And the thing is, like, I honestly, the older I get, the more I do personal development, the more I 100% believe that you get back what you put out. So mm -hmm. when you are the healthiest you can be, when you're not stressing because you have an income, so you're not worrying about the bills and you're not worrying about all of that means you're putting out positive vibes and the people yes. around you are getting them. And the more you can help other people to get into that same state, the more mm -hmm. universally is just a happier place to be, you know, for lack of yeah. like to completely simplify it, you know? Yeah, to totally. Um, you know, everything, I don't know if I, I, I can't look at it right now, but there's a great quote by this guy, um, I don't know, you know, from Greek and Roman times, you know, who basically said that, you know, that, that people cannot flourish creatively, intellectually, spiritually, you know, career wise, whatever, um, unless you have health. It all starts with health. Everything. Aristotle? No, it, uh, hip, uh, hip, not Hippocrates. Hippocrates. Not Hippocrates. Hippocrates. Um, mm. No, it's so, right. It starts with an H, but I can't minim I can't minimize this because we're recording to look at it. The quotes on my desktop, I, it's there all the time for me to see. Um, but it's basically it's basically you have to create health from inside. Health is the first wealth, um, and you know there's so many people that are suffering and, and aren't you know they're not standing in their power. They're not living the lives they were meant to live. Oh, look, there's Napoleon. He is the sweetest puppy. Oh, he's the sweetest puppy dog. Um, Aww. Isn't he sweet? Giving her kisses. Oh, he, he loves Hannah to death, as you can see. Okay, that's good, Napoleon. <laughs> all right all right well we've got three minutes left anybody any more um uh, any more closing thoughts i could just watch hannah's dog for the next i know <laughs> <laughs> i'll give a i'll give a i'll give a closing thought i guess a synopsis of this um okay best way to get started with this and change the world is get enrolled start using product that's in alignment with your goals Invite people to do it with you. And as other people have a good experience with you, and some of them are going to be inspired to do the same thing, to share it with other people. And that's how it goes viral, so to speak. So that's how you change Absolutely. the world. Right? Absolutely. Yeah, vital. You, you become vital by, by using the products, getting healthy according to your goals. And that inspires you to, to, to do more. And it also inspires other people who see you on your journey, do, do, sharing and documenting your journey, just like Tom, you said a little while ago. Because you're inviting people to do it with you. That's why whenever mm -hmm. someone wants to wait till they're in shape, I'm like, no, you'll shoot yourself in the foot. You want to invite people to do it with you. Do it like gangbusters, lock arms, and, <laughs> and uh, be vulnerable together, be a mess together but get better together and help each other out and hold each other right. accountable to invite people to do it with you. Yeah. That's, how you that's how you get started and that's how you change the world. And that's what I always tell people. Amen. Nobody wants to read a book that says once upon a time, the end. Like no. that's not a good story to say I did it. You know, like yeah. I want to see you do the steps. And I had the other yeah. day I posted, 
this morning was a cranky pants workout. I was not in the mood. I was a brat about it. I wanted to stop my feet and go, no, no, no. Right. <laughs> but I did it. And then my dog attacked me with love. And it was a funny story. Yeah. So I just share it, you know? Yeah, Shelly's got a golden lab that likes to get in the way of her workouts. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, yeah. And you know, there are some health coaches out there, obviously, who are, you know, got into the business when they were, you know, really trim and buff and had, you know, the proverbial beach bodies. But what what people learn from them is that, you know, just because they have they have, you know, perfect bodies, they still have health issues. They still suffer from anxiety and depression. They still have, you know, immune, you know, problems with their immune systems. They still have, you know, they, they, you know, nobody's perfect. They still have stories to tell and they can still lock arms and go on journeys with people as well. You know, as well as those of us who had, you know, well over 50 pounds to lose, you know, so forth and so on. So. And fit shaming is just as bad as fat shaming. But right. so. Absolutely. And when we go to the summits, I mean, the coaches there, there are coaches there that are 300 pounds. There are people there are 90 pounds soaking wet. There, there are grandmothers there, you know, in their, in their 60s and 70s. You know, there's moms and daughters and babies and whole families. It's, it's a beautiful thing. It's an absolutely beautiful thing. Yeah. Oh, there he is again. <laughs> All right, we got less than a minute. We're probably going to, you know,